And for many of us, it means it's time to turn back the clock. Yeah, fall back. It's a practice that was first introduced in the early 20th century, but the future of daylight saving time far from settled. NBC's Emily Aketa joins us with more on this one. Hey, Emily. Good morning. Well, let's start with the good news. We all get an extra hour of sleep this weekend, but soon enough, nightfall will come much earlier. And while this ritual has been practiced for decades by every state except Hawaii and Arizona, more people are questioning whether it's time to stop flip-flopping our clocks. Whether you like it or not, the time to turn back your clock is almost here. But this November could be the final fallback as more lawmakers and Americans question the decades-old ritual's usefulness. We hate the change of time. It's confusing. Nearly two-thirds of Americans want the biannual flip-flop to stop as they struggle to adapt to what many consider the worst kind of time travel. Seeing the sun go down like while I'm still at the office is uh, definitely more of a bummer. Every year on the second Sunday in March, most of the U.S. springs forward an hour to extend light later into the evening. Then the first Sunday in November, we fall back, allowing for an earlier sunrise. But why do we do it? Contrary to popular belief, the practice first introduced here more than a century ago was not implemented to help farmers gain extra daylight, but rather to save on electricity. Though experts say those savings have been at most minimal. Hollywood has had fun at the expense of the clock chaos. The daylight savings time loving bureaucrats have been punching the clock on the taxpayer's dime for too long. Oh, God. But the time change can have a very real impact on your health, with some people suffering from seasonal affective disorder. When the days get short and dark, it disrupts function and disrupts the ability to enjoy one's life. Researchers have also found an increase in the number of heart attacks, strokes, and car accidents in the days after the time change. This past March, the Senate unanimously voted to make daylight saving time permanent, but the bill has since stalled in the House. Critics point out it's already been tried in the 1970s and ended less than a year later. For now, the clock is turning back, so there are some ways to better adjust. First, embrace the extra hour of rest. Experts say more than a third of Americans are sleep deprived. Also, make the shift gradual. Start incrementally moving up your bedtime now. And consider buying a wake-up light. Light is important for wakefulness. Light is important for activity. And light is important for mood. The light that's been taken away from you, take it back. Take it back. But you didn't grow up dealing with daylight. Oh, no, I thought in Arizona we didn't have it. So I have like a mental block. I'm like, wait, we have all two what? States. Yes, two states. I know. I never understood it. You know, for me, my kids play sports and they practice all throughout the week. So by the time they're finished, it's so dark. It almost doesn't feel safe. Then I rush to get there. Yeah. You know, so I'm just, I wish we'd just stay still. Just that's just with their body clock. Yeah, yeah of course. All right. Thank you, Emily. Thanks. I'm sure you'll be back on the same story this time next year. Yeah. <laughs>